how about extra sources of income? I know that a lot of folks might want to put extra machines in their stores. Well, uh, they might, yeah. I will talk you out of it. We're in the business of reselling gas, electric, and water at a markup. Uh, so when you start to get into vending uh, Super Bowls or bubble gum, I say it's a no-no. The Super Bowls, they end up all over the store, they end up in your drains, and the amount of markup on those balls is not that great. Uh, the bubble gum ends up, again, all over the store. We're in the business of cleaning people's laundry, not getting it dirtier in the process. And also your attendants will have to be cleaning that up. Uh, with soda and snack machines, a lot of folks want to get involved in that. But I can say, think long and hard about it. I can talk you into it or out of it. Personally, I go with a vending company. I take 15% of their total take. It works for me. All they do is plug in, I give them the space, and I give them the electricity. They come in and clear out the old product. Don't forget, you're going to lose some money in product that goes bad or stale. Uh, now you're dealing with food, and that's a no-no to me. I'd rather just take a check in the mail uh, twice a month and, and be done with it. Once you start to establish more and more stores, the less headaches, the better. Another item you can gain some ancillary income from is gaming or uh, stand-up arcade games. Now, be very careful with your arcade games. Only two, and make sure you own them. Reason you only want two, your customers are in your store to do their chores, washing and drying. That's where we're deriving our profits from. If you put five or six gaming machines, stand-up arcade games in your store, now you're asking for trouble in the form of teenage kids, coming into the store simply to play the games. Again, our customers are predominantly female. They might not feel comfortable with a bunch of teenagers hanging out in the back, maybe even striking up a cigarette every now and then. I'm not saying that the neighborhood is necessarily bad or the kids are bad, but that's not an element that you need. This is an indication that their uh, machines have actually been stolen in the past and taken right out of the store. Forget about the coin. They just take them home and play video games with the kids. Again, I prefer not to see that. I don't do that in my stores. If, uh, if somebody chooses to come in heavy-handed and steal machines from you, there's really not much you can do. If I wanted those machines, I'd get them out of here. Two stand-up arcade games is ideal. And one of them should be an older 80s style machine because, you know, we 30-somethings just love to play Miss Pac-Man. And one of them should be a more modern, maybe a shooting game. And that works well. Another issue here is this is a card-operated store, but their ancillary equipment like these are going to be coin-operated. So in reality, a customer can't come in with folding money and get the change they need to utilize these machines. So they probably do very little business. This store also indicates it has a drop-off here, but there's no attendant here on a Sunday. I'm making money right now. It's not my mission to go into every laundromat and pick it apart and, and find something wrong with it. Uh, I, you can go into my stores and find issues. Uh, but if you're not prepared to tackle those issues and get your store as good as it can be, then you'll never know what your potential for income really is. I also said own these machines because there's no product. You can spend about $1,000 for a stand-up arcade game in good working order. You want to make sure there's lots of locks on it and everything works when you purchase it. That $1,000 is going to earn you two or $300 a month. So you're looking at a three-month, maybe four-month return on investment or ROI. It just makes sense. You keep pulling the coin out, keep earning real dollars from those machines. Only two. Got it.